This is a West Volusia Historical Society oral history interview with Frank A. Ford. The interviewer is Mary Lou Weaver Peffer, who is a volunteer and friend. Today is Thursday, June 20th, 2019. This interview is being recorded at the Deland House Museum. Frank, thanks so much for being with us today to record this interview. Thank you. We're going to start off with just asking you a few questions about your experience growing up in Deland, and then we'll ask you about your family, and then we'll ask you a little bit about your philosophy of life at the end. So bear with me, and uh, I think you're going to enjoy the experience. Uh, to start off with, Frank, where were you born, and how long have you lived in West Volusia? Well, my wife and I both were born in Deland, uh, within two months of each other in 1938. We lived there all our lives, except for uh, summers in Kentucky on a farm myself, and um, uh, law school, and um, worked for a law firm for uh, a while after law school, out of, t out of town. But since then, we've been uh, back into land and raised our family here. Do you come from a large family, and were you the eldest, middle, or youngest child? There were three girls uh, older. Uh, Emma was 18 years older, Ray 14 years older, and Jeannie 10 years older. And... Um, and we raised three children and seven grandchildren came along and then now seven great-grandchildren. Tell me the names of your sisters because I remember some of them when I was when we were younger. Emma Ford, she never married. Uh, Helen Ray Ford Veach, she married a boy from the University of Kentucky, uh, Jack Veach, and Jean, youngest sister, married uh, Kim Penrod, he was another University of Kentucky graduate. Did they all grow up and live here, or did they, did they move away? Uh, three sisters grew up here. Two were born in Kentucky, and one in the mountains, I think, eastern Kentucky, and one in Owenton, south of Cincinnati. And then uh, one sister and I were born here. Okay. And the two sisters uh, lived in various places. Uh, Jeannie's husband was an FBI agent. And when he came back, he came back to Kentucky, where he was born, and became mayor of Paducah, Kentucky. Oh, interesting. And then Ray and Jack lived on the farm in Finchville, Kentucky, outside of Louisville, about 25 miles east of Louisville, near Shelbyville. Okay. And then they came back down here in 1964, I think. So everybody has pretty much made Deland or this area their hometown. Yeah, yeah. yeah they yeah. Yeah, Up until my sister Jean died, she... She came back here about every three months. Oh, really? Yeah, she loved coming back to the land. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a nice place to live, isn't yeah. it? What brought your family to this area originally? Well, my father, as I said, was a, a lawyer in Kentucky. Could, couldn't make any money in the mountains. and He had a little coal mine that he mined himself. Uh, had a little, called a Mine Jenny. Uh, he worked the mine himself with a pick and shovel and <laughs> loaded the coal on the little, little mule and uh, didn't make any money that way, <laughs> so he came to Florida in 24. And my mother followed, after he got a place to stay, she followed shortly thereafter. So uh, did he have family here, or just think that it would be no, nice to live where no. it didn't he, get cold? He, he just liked, he came down on the riverboat from Jacksonville, and first went to Daytona, and uh, had a cousin in Daytona, uh, but he liked the land better, so he came back to the land and started doing title work, uh, look, researching land titles. And what year was that that he immigrated here to Florida? Uh, 1924. 1924. Mm -hmm. Well, so you've been around here for a long time, <laughs> a Ford family. Um, how did your family, your father, your other relatives make their living in the days you were growing up here in the land? Well, it was pretty tough. Um, nobody was really making a living in, in the early days. Um, matter of fact, they lived uh, over on the east side of town in a little grocery store owner named Mr. Cross uh, would let them charge food up to six months at a time and uh, get a little money ahead and go pay, <laughs> pay Mr. Cross some on his grocery bill. But <clears throat> originally... Um, uh, he, he got a little bit into politics and uh, became uh, clerk of the criminal court of record under Bert Fish, uh, Judge Bert Fish. 
And then when Judge Bert Fish was appointed, um, I think, to as counselor to Egypt and Saudi Arabia, uh, he, he left the court, of course, and the, the firm was involved in politics back then, the, you know, the law firm. And um, some of the members of the law firm were afraid the other opposing political party was going to take over the court, so they had the court abolished by the legislature. <laughs> so my father was out of a job. <laughs> and uh, he ran for tax collector and lost and uh, basically started trading in real estate. And back then, uh, land was $2 an acre, um, up to $5 an acre. And uh, oceanfront was $2 a front foot, not counting river, nothing for riverfront. They just uh, gave it away. Gave it away. Wow. And nobody wanted to pay the taxes. Mm. So um, started trading in land and... and uh, accumulating some land. I guess that's the main um, source of income later on. Initially, he cut uh, timber. He'd buy a track of land with some timber on it. He'd cut the timber and and uh, then later on sell the land. I think you mentioned the other day when we were talking about this that he worked out at the uh, Navy, Navy Air Base here in Delaney. Right. What was his job out there? Well, he wanted to go back in the service. He was a World War I Army, but he was too old. Oh, okay. So they let him be guard. So he packed a pistol? Packed a pistol. Yeah. Walked the uh, naval base. Did he ever have to use it? No. That <laughs> <laughs> was good. <laughs> And your mom um, and your aunts or other relatives, I guess, helped out however they could during the war effort. Oh, yeah. 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 Everybody, uh, Sally's mother particularly had, uh, uh, she had a good victory garden <clears throat> and uh, chickens and uh, Sally's dad would catch fish. <laughs> and Sally says she still has her uh, uh, coupon. What do they call the little coupon? The uh, Oh yeah, you would get the uh, the tickets, the stamp for the tickets, or tickets, for, yeah, for, for spending food. at the grocery store, right? Yeah, yeah. and <clears throat> my sisters Emma worked at the naval base as a secretary to the commander, and then um, my other sister uh, drove a, a, I think like a van, and mm-hmm. transported sailors around. Um, I think that was through the American Le- American uh, Red Cross or American Legion. I can't remember which. So your family participated, participated quite a bit then in yeah. the effort, particularly yeah. the local effort right. here with our Navy Air Station, which right. of course you know is still runs a little museum out there right. today. Right, great museum. Very yeah. successful. Yeah. yeah. So my um, father was a World War One uh, foot soldier and uh, got the Distinguished Service Cross. Uh, but I brought the, the uh, medal and the write-up, uh, the award, uh, at Chateau Thierry, France. They were keeping the Germans from getting to Paris. So it's a rare honor oh, yeah. to receive something uh, like that. Yeah. Yep. Um, when you were growing up, I know you went to elementary high school here. Tell us a little bit about the schools you went to and what you liked or disliked and if you played sports or okay. anything like that. Well, all the schools, the kindergarten, grammar school, junior high and high school, were on one block between Rich Avenue, Clara, and Wisconsin. We call it Wisconsin Avenue Grammar School. Mm-hmm. So a very small um, high school graduating class was 135. And uh, we practiced football out in the sandlot between the schools. <laughs> I remember and that. And then later on out at the naval base, uh, full of sand spurs out there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, played football and ran track. Uh, we had an excellent football team. Um, we were rated by the sports riders, uh, number one in the state in Class A. And uh, our track team was very good. We came in second in the state, again in Class A. Uh, 
I won the state hundred yard dash. Good. In Gainesville, and was this was 56, on, 57, 58? Well, we set the mile relay record. I was on the mile relay team too, uh, which is four by four hundred and forty yards, uh, to equaling a mile. That was in uh, nineteen fifty four, and then again, no fifty five and fifty six. You graduated in fifty six. That's right. right. Yeah. yeah. So you had an interesting um, time in high school. And, oh, I loved high school, yeah. glee club and track and football, yeah. It was nice being in a smaller group. Now they have 600 kids in the senior yeah. class. <laughs> <laughs> Big difference. Uh, um, what did, what uh, courses did you enjoy most in high school? Well, that, um, that prepare you maybe for chemistry, physics, uh, English, agriculture, um, where the ones I like best. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you were still in high school and maybe after you started college, did you always think you wanted to be an attorney or did you have some other career goals? I think primarily I was going into the medical field, uh, either veterinarian or medical doctor. Mm -hmm. My grandfather was a doctor in Kentucky. Uh, he covered three counties on either horseback or or later on, a buggy. Yeah. <laughs> and his brother was also a doctor, and he covered the adjoining three counties the same way. A lot different from today. Yeah. <laughs> today, you would have to take a semi truck with you yeah, to haul around your right. medical equipment. <laughs> so, of course, they got paid in chickens and yes, eggs sure. and things like that. Um, I know that right after you graduated from high school, you were accepted at the Citadel. Would you tell us a little bit about the Citadel, what kind of a college it is, and why you went there, and then you had a really interesting experience mm -hmm. your first year there. <clears throat> Let us hear about that. Well, Wheeler Summerhill, um, his father owned Summerhill Funeral Home. Wheeler was at the Citadel and encouraged me to go. It's a military school. Back then, it was all male. Mm -hmm. uh, very good school. I learned to study there. And um, uh, I was in Air Force ROTC. I would, I would want to be a jet pilot oh, okay. and then go into medicine after that. But I had uh, uh, dated Sally all through high school. Sally Rhodes. Sally Rhodes. Yeah. And uh, we missed each other too much. <laughs> so between semesters, we didn't run off and get married. She was at a little school up in Georgia called Tift College for Women. And between semesters, we got our license and got married in Forsyth. And um, uh, I guess that was uh, a surprise to the president of the college. We kept it a secret, <laughs> and Mr. Willie was the night watchman, and they were carrying the luggage out the night before putting it in the car, and Mr. Willie had his flashlight and, and shined it on him. And he said, please don't tell on us, Mr. Willie. Uh. <laughs> so he, didn't, he didn't. But the president found out about it and was, you know, came in during the ceremony in, at Presbyterian Church. And um, he was very upset about it. But he was nice. He didn't say anything. <laughs> didn't ruin the ceremony. Didn't ruin the ceremony. <laughs> Did your parents know? No, no. Nobody oh, knew here. except... Uh, <laughs> There were two girls from Deland, uh, Joanne Campbell and Gail Cohn, right now, uh, Gail Cohn. She was uh, Gail James. Mm -hmm. Her father, Sam James, had the appliance and uh, oh, yeah. store downtown. They were all in the, They all conspired together <laughs> to get us married. <laughs> and you had friends that knew you were, that were going to stand up for you too? Well, actually, they couldn't. They had to go back to the Citadel. Oh. I brought them with me, and uh, they said, what are we going to do? I said, well, I'll sell you my razor for $15 <laughs> when I needed a razor. <laughs> and took my car back to the Citadel. And uh, uh, so they, they couldn't wait. Otherwise, they would have stood up, you know. So then you came home and said, guess what? <laughs> oh, yeah. And we called, called home, and my sister, um, Emma, answered. And, of course, she was shocked and called Sally's mother and uh, my mother in Kentucky. She was visiting mother's sister in Kentucky at the time. So they were all surprised. Surprised. <laughs> and 
But they knew Sally and they oh, loved sure. her, so yeah, they yeah. probably weren't that surprised. And, and a lot of kids ran there. off back then, yeah. you know, and went to Georgia to get married. But That's true. Sally was already there, so we didn't run off technically. <laughs> but you couldn't return to the Citadel, could you, as a married man? No, you couldn't be married and go to the Citadel. So then where did you go to school? I came back to Stetson and talked to Dr. Edmonds, who was president. And I said, Dr. Edmonds, I, I would like to enter Stetson in spring semester. He said, "Well, go talk to, go talk to. Um, I can't remember his name all of a sudden. Um, was it Garfield or Hood or? No, it no. was. Um, ah, can't remember. But then he said, go talk to the dean of the business school, Furlong, oh, Dean Dr. Furlong, Mr. Furlong, yeah, and said uh, he'll sign you up. And sure enough, I walked over and talked to Dean Furlong. That was my entrance exam. <laughs> that was your entrance exam. <laughs> well." You had a successful <laughs> career there and then went on to Stetson Law School, did right, you not? Right, right. Mm -hmm. Graduated from that in 1962. Yeah. So so you and Sally have been married since... 62 years. Yeah, a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Very successful marriage. Still like each other. They like each other. <laughs> That's good. Uh, tell us how many children you and Sally have had and your grandchildren. We have three children, uh, seven grandchildren, seven great-grandchildren. Three live in... Uh, Three of the grandchildren live in, great grandchildren live in uh, Denver. Uh, Jeffrey's son, Ford, who's uh, named after the family, of course, they live in Boston, he and his wife and child. And the um, rest of them are right here. And your three children's names are? Alex, uh, Lisa, and Courtney. I Alex know. is a lawyer here, and right. Lisa works with the family business. And Courtney has her own business. She had she, she and her husband had the indie market. Oh, the Friday night. It's actually every yeah. three months, mm -hmm. and um, also they've just started one in Sanford, uh, indie market oh, in Sanford. Good for them. So you have seven grandchildren and seven great grandchildren. Right. And I'm sure that holidays are a busy time at your house. Very busy. <laughs> um, <clears throat> since you've lived here for eighty years or around that many years, Frank. Tell us what major changes you've seen growing up here and establishing your career and family here. Well, of course, the area's grown tremendously. Um, I think the land was probably 4,000 people back then, maybe, um, when we were growing up in high school. Um, it's now, the county is now over 500,000. Uh, the lands downtown, they've done a great job downtown with the Main Street Association. And uh, we started that back in the middle 60s. Uh, I was on the city commission and we started the um, um, plant of brick planters mm -hmm. and the palm trees. We planted palm trees and later on they took out the palm trees and put in the, uh, you know, more... Uh, trees that look like anywhere USA. So that, that brought in um, uh, more videos being taken into land and because uh, they didn't, the palm trees made it look to Florida. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, the Main Street's done a great job here. Uh, the main changes downtown have been uh, wonderful. You know, they've, they've done a wonderful job. They've brought in a lot of new residents too. New I residents think, the way the and town looks businesses. Attractive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Friday nights, um, everything closed up. Friday at five. <laughs> yeah, back in the day when we were in school, right. I remember it. Yeah. Right? Now the, it's a different story. The excitement was to park downtown on Saturday morning and watch people walk around. <laughs> <laughs> That's when the farmers came to town. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, those were the days, but things have changed a lot since then, yeah. for sure. Um, I wanted you to tell us a little bit about your dad being instrumental <clears throat> in bringing what is now the largest city in West Volusia County, Deltona. How did that come about? Well, as I said, the land was uh, $2 to $5, $10 an acre accumulated over a period of time. And at one time, Disney flew over it with a realtor named... Uh, uh, John, um, I can't remember if more from Winter Park. Um, Disney flew over it, looked at it, had a lot of lakes, beautiful land, beautiful high ground. And uh, 
then Mackle Brothers flew over it with the same realtor, and they moved faster than Disney. Otherwise, Disney could have been here. Oh, okay. And, uh, that's interesting. The, uh, it, that started in 19, I think about 60, I believe. But they, the Mackle Brothers just flew over it and said, we'll take it. And how many acres was it, and how much did he well, earn from that sale? Our sale was a little over 7,000 acres. And the net per acre was $315 an acre. Uh, compare that to today's prices. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Mackles accumulated another 8,000 acres from, from different owners mm-hmm. to make a total of what they could only develop. They, the financiers in New York uh, said no more than 15,000 acres at the time. Why was that? I just, they just wanted to make sure they were would stay within their budget, I guess. And um, <clears throat> Well, it so, didn't take them long, did it, to start building long. houses out there and <laughs> making it a big city. I know when it was started, it was supposed to be more of a uh, retirement community. Right. But it became more of a bedroom community in Orlando, mm, Orlando now, right. being near the interstate and all that. Yep. So. Originally, the houses were house, lot. Uh, they didn't have air conditioning, but house and lot uh, with sidewalks, power, sewer. I think this, originally the downtown had sewer. Uh, the outlying lots were on septic tank, but I think the original price was like six thousand yeah. <laughs> for remember. the whole whole house and yeah. all. <laughs> Oh, everything was included. Everything was included. I remember going down there when they had Deltona Boulevard and they had a lot of model homes. There. Right. And you could go and look yeah. at the model. They were tiny then, but... They uh, were tiny, yeah. I guess that met the need of a lot of people because sure. yeah. they have all kinds of houses down there now. That's so. right. That's right. Yeah. Well, I think Deltona made a big change in the DeLand area too, bringing more people in from the north mm-hmm. and then now Puerto Rico. I think a lot of people mm-hmm. from that country live live here now. So sure. It's yeah. changed the... Change the community around a little bit. Right. For the better. A lot of real nice people. Investing in real estate has been a, uh, a major factor in your family's life. And is there still something that you personally own and manage, or do you have a company? Well, we that still does have uh, Ford Properties, which still has a good bit of land. And we bought, we've accumulated uh, quite a bit of agricultural land. Uh, that um, is in the path of progress as far as home building, that sort of thing. But yes, we still are involved in... What do you mean when you say agriculture, uh, citrus or what? Well, we we just sold our grove in Orange County um, for, for housing because of the freezes in the 1980s and the uh, disease called greening. Yeah. We really lost all of our citrus. Uh, <clears throat> One variety held up pretty well, and that's called honeybell, which is very good fruit, but that, we didn't have much of that. And so um, they're working on uh, trying to develop varieties that are, that are resistant to greening. What is the greening caused by? Some it's sort a little, of a it's called a psyllid, P-S-Y-L-L-I-D, and it uh, came in from uh, Asia. Uh, I think originally through South America, and now worldwide they're having a tremendous problem really? with mm-hmm. with the psyllid. It's gotten into California. Does it get in the roots or something and cut gets off? Gets in the, the roots and the canopy, and uh, the fruit's not as good, and uh, it the, the fruit becomes disfigured somewhat. One side will be larger than the other, and the leaves same thing. Mm. So. Uh, <clears throat> Between the freezes and the uh, diseases, we pretty well, <laughs> I think all 37 counties in Florida now are affected by by the greening. So is that going to make the price of uh, citrus go up or just not well, be able to get it Well, they still import. They still import. And, they, and people are still planting. Uh, uh, I forget which companies planted I think $25 million worth of new trees. That's quite a quite an investment. It is. They're taking a big chance. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, 
we were in uh, pulpwood and timber originally, and of course the fires of '98, yeah. we lost a lot of timber. In '98, uh, the three counties that were involved, uh, well, five counties total, I guess, uh, hundreds of thousands of acres that different owners lost during the fires of '98. They couldn't stop the fires. Too dry. Yeah. It was impossible yeah. with the winds and the, the thunderstorms. And we were in Montana during the fires in Yellowstone. Again, they couldn't stop the fires. Well, just like California last yeah. year, too. Yeah. What, what they've learned is that we need to do more control burning. Uh, How does that help? Well, it gets rid of the understory, and uh, uh, the fires are more controllable. So it's, uh, it's something that needed to be done, but, but the powers that be wouldn't allow it to be done for a long time, but now I realize that it's, mm -hmm. it's an important way to keep down the wildfires. So when Henry DeLand came here in the, in the 1800s and convinced his buddies to come down from New York and plant citrus, they had a good idea, but it's had many it hadn't been Problems easy. Problems <laughs> over the years <laughs> and continues uh, to this day. Agriculture is not an easy Not thing an easy to, way to make uh, a living, right? <clears throat> Did you ever run cattle? We still have a few cows, and yes, uh-huh. Uh, originally, my father was, like I say, mostly timber and pulpwood. And then later on, I got, uh, I took agriculture in high school from Prof. Fagan. Oh, yeah. And uh, uh, became interested in and Bramble cows back then. And now we have mostly um, Angus. Uh, what happened to the Brahmin um, run? I don't see many of them. Well, you see them in different places. Do you? you get down to South Florida, there's still a dominant breed down there because they're resistant to bugs and diseases and they can get by on pretty poor uh, ground. Yeah. <laughs> it's flat woods. Is, they're used for meat, though, right? Oh, yeah. Is, they're, is it they're a good, good. healthy kind Sure. Of oh, yeah. Too? Very good. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Okay. It made, the Brahma made the Florida cattle industry, really. Um, the Herefords were not uh, that good because they were susceptible to um, cancer, eye cancer, oh. hmm. because they have white around their eyes. So they, and the, so the Brahma was more resistant to, uh, uh, eye cancer, for instance. Mm -hmm. and Angus now is the dominant, as you know. The good black Angus. Good black steaks. Angus beef. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. We all look forward to those. Um, Frank, what stands out in your mind as one of the most memorable experiences or the best time of your life? And would you think you'd like to do that all over again if you had a chance, that life? Sure. Uh, I couldn't, can't say I'd change anything. Really? The... Uh, well, way back, I worked on an oil rig in Kentucky, what was called a cable tool rig. Uh, modern technology is the rotary rig, which drills fast, but cable tool rig, we actually pounded a, a tool uh, with sledgehammers, the, the driller and myself. We'd heat the tool in, the, in a forge and pound on it until it was the right shape, and then it would go down in the hole and beat up the rock. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think the Chinese invented it 2,000 years ago. <laughs> so, uh, I enjoyed that, of course. And uh, Alex was a year old at the time when I, when I worked on that oil rig. And I enjoyed the, the woods, uh, uh, rambling around in the woods with my father and a Jeep. He bought a brand new Jeep after World War II for $600. Yeah. <laughs> and we used to ramble the woods, he'd call it. Do you uh, hunt and fish, or did you? We we did. Um, we, a lot of quail hunting. Back then, we had a lot of quail, and um, uh, some deer hunting, and, and a lot of turkey hunting. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but mostly, back then, mostly quail hunting with the dogs, beautiful uh, dogs that would point, yeah, pointers, you know, point yeah. the quail, and uh -huh. uh, pointers and setters. A lot of friends, we'd all, boys after school, we'd go hunting together and um, with, my, with my father and his friend, Mr. Cunningham. So uh, a lot of good fishing, 
lake fishing in St. John and over on the coast. Yeah, still uh, is. Still I think, is, yeah. yeah. I went this week over Did the coast. Really? Yeah. Saltwater fishing. Saltwater, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we can still do that. Yeah. And does the St. John still have much bass in it? Oh, yeah. St. John's still a good good fishing river. Yeah. I know. It was known for that for many, many years. Yeah. yeah. A lot of tournaments were held. Bass tournaments mm-hmm. used to be held. Yeah. I don't know if they still are or not around a plaque in that area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Red Flowers uh, uh, is an excellent uh, uh, bass fisherman guide. He, mm-hmm. He's just retired from Duke Power, so he's full-time. Oh, yeah. Well, his dad was a uh, yep, uh, too. Yeah, and the, the uncles, Tom and Dick Flowers, and Bill Flowers, uh Bill died several years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they uh, they knew how to catch bass. They sure did. <laughs> um, I would like to know, uh, Frank, based on your own life and your experiences, um, what advice would you give to your grandchildren today or your great-grandchildren or anybody's children, young people growing up, on how to live a successful life if, if you had a magic wand? Well, <laughs> I'd say... Uh, uh, be kind to everybody, be friendly to everybody. Um, I think my wife's uh, always been a good example in helping people if they're sick, take food, or after death in the family, mm-hmm. uh, show a lot of concern to people. Uh, study hard. Yeah. <laughs> And do what do what you like to do as far as work. And if you can. If you know. can, yeah, try to. Good. Well, I think you've set a good example for your children and grandchildren, certainly, and a lot of other people here, too, in the land that have known you and cared about you and your family. So well, thank you. Uh, it's been nice knowing you for so many years. It has. It's been school nice together. knowing you, yeah. And um, we've seen a lot of changes here. We have certainly seen a lot of changes. <laughs> I know your family means a lot to you, and you brought a picture in, which we're going to show later, okay. of your yeah. Uh, entire family, right. minus the two youngest great grandchildren. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we will look forward to seeing that in this video. Okay. Um, so my last two questions to you, Frank. Um, well, I guess really my last question is: You've done a lot of things in your life. You've had a great family. You've been successful in your businesses. So, how would you like to be remembered? Uh, again, family. I think uh, as a good parent and a father and, and good son, um, good grandfather and good great-grandfather. And great husband. Oh, well, thank you. Stally stayed with you, what did you say, 62 years? 62 years. years. <laughs> so, well, she's been very successful herself. She's she? been a good wife. A good, she's a good wife. great grandmother and great-great-grandmother. Yeah, and good health. Good health. She yeah. still exercises at the Y yeah. every day. Uh, not Sunday usually, but uh, most every day, and she'll take uh, two or three classes every day. Good for her. At the YMCA. <laughs> yeah, at the YMCA. So, well, thank you for coming and joining us today and doing this interview with us. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to uh, spending other times together here at the Historical Society or at other events in Deland. So, appreciate well, thank you being you, here. Thank you, Thank you. Okay.